I feel like I shouldn't be in this much shock, but I am. This is too much for a tired person to deal with today. Hello, my loves, and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten, and we're at the start of another weekly read and vlog. And this week, I want to read the Discord book club pick, which is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. So this won the book club for the month of April. So if you don't know, I have a Discord. It's linked below. It's always free to join. And every single month, we have a book club pick, and we talk about it in the Discord channel. So yeah, this is the one that won. I'm really pleased, actually, because this was off my TBR, and it's been sat on my TBR for ages. This this was the first T. Kingfisher book that I bought and I haven't read it. I've read all the other ones I've had by them, like more recent releases, and I still haven't read this one. So I need to get around to it. So this is the week we're going to be doing it. Now, as of today, I'm actually going to be starting my 24 hour readathon. So I won't be picking this one up until Sunday evening. So we'll see how much of this I get read Sunday evening. I don't know too much about this. All I know is that we've got, I think it's portal fantasy gothicness. Could be completely wrong with that. So I guess we're going to find out. I would also like to read a ebook with this and I've got a couple of holds in on the Libby app and I haven't decided quite what one I want to go with. I'm thinking to pair this darker gothic read with a cozy fantasy because I do have the hold for Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry which is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I really enjoyed and it was really cute and cozy. However, I've been putting off picking up Bookshops and Bone Dust because I wasn't sure if I would want to have both on my shelves because I love a good cozy fantasy, don't get me wrong, but I prefer a cozy mystery. So I want to see if I love this book enough for me to own it or not. So we're going to try it out. So the Libby app works really well for that. So we're going to try it and see what I think. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I won't be picking up the ebook until I go back to work though, which is going to be on Wednesday. And then I'll read it on my lunch breaks at work. So until then, I'm going to be focusing on this one. That's the plans for this weekly read and vlog. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what we get read. As of right now, I actually need to get to the readathon, which if you haven't watched that, that will be out before this video. So do go ahead and see what you think but I'm very excited for the book I'm going to be reading for that video and I'm very excited to get into this like it just sounds really good and I love this cover like I actually really love this cover like it is really cool I love the skull and the butterflies and everything like it looks absolutely amazing so yeah really looking forward to starting this one but that'll be tomorrow evening I will catch up with you probably Monday once I've actually read a bit of The Hollow Places that's it for this intro nice quick introduction I love it when they're nice and short it makes editing them so much easier anyway I hope you've all been doing really really well let me know what you've been up to what you've been reading and I will catch up with you shortly <laughs> really nice couple of days like it's been a really nice few days off I'm not gonna lie we've got today and tomorrow off and then I'm back to work Wednesday but I feel like this time off has been exactly what I needed nothing's been too much it's been really relaxing and restful and part of that is the readathon which is great and I did manage to finish a book during that so I was very very happy but also in general I'm trying to take it a little bit slower so as much as yesterday after I finished the readathon I still did get stuff done it wasn't loads which was very much needed and last night I started the hollow places and this is really readable so I've read the first 120 pages I'm up to chapter 10 and it's so easy to read I think part of that is the actual font like the font's really easy to read T Kingfisher has a way of writing which really grips me like it's not too flowery it's not too beautiful like that instead it just kind of gets straight to 
the point but also does it in a really humorous way and it just makes for a really fast read so I'm yeah I'm loving this I'm eating it up I didn't even want to put it down last night but I was getting tired and this book is a bit creepy and I am a scaredy cat so I knew if I carried on reading I would have probably nightmares <laughs> But this is really, really interesting. So I like the fact that we start off with a bit of humour. So we're following Kara, also known as Carrot, and she is, well, she's not doing so great in life. She's going through a divorce and she just doesn't really know what to do. And she ends up moving in with her uncle and living at the Museum of Wonders. And this museum is the most eccentric museum going. And I love hearing about all the different things that are in the museum and just how different and eclectic this collection is. It's really honestly it's really interesting but also just her uncle in general is a very unusual character like he believes in everything absolutely everything even if it contradicts one another that's fine it will still make sense to him it's like it's fine everyone has different opinions and I'm fine with that. And then we have this other character who works in the coffee shop next door and he is also rather eccentric but it's really fun. I love the duo that we have. So we end up with Carrot in the museum and she discovers this hole in the wall. And so she's like, oh gosh, okay, grabs the coffee shop guy whose name, why have I forgotten his name? Hang on a second, Simon. He comes over to help fix it all up and they find another corridor like this hallway and they're like um what this isn't even possible like between the buildings and stuff like this doesn't make sense so they decide to go exploring they discover this unusual kind of like portal world thing going on and it's all really quite sinister but it's nothing that you can put your finger on it's just the feeling that you get is so creepy and intense and I am loving it. It is really good. I just want to get straight back into it to be quite honest but I do have things I need to do today. I need to finish editing a vlog so that can go up which would have been out before this one. So I need to get that done. Hopefully try and film another video. We'll see how that goes. And then just a few other little bits and stuff that I need to get done but I really want to read more of this. And with the way that I'm going this is quite a short book. It's 350-ish pages. Yeah 351 pages long and I've already read the first 120 in one sitting, so I don't imagine this is gonna take me long at all to read. Is this gonna be a new favorite horror book? No, but what I like about T. King Fisher's work is what I've kind of come to expect, whether it's more horror leaning or not, although I've mainly read the more horror leaning work, is the humorous tone that's threaded through this book. And as much as I can say, you know what, maybe the actual storylines themselves don't stick with me forever, although Nettle and Bone I did really like, it has a consistency with really good atmosphere, really great quirky characters that have the humour through it, and then this sinister undertone to everything that you can't quite put your finger on, and it just seems to work. So I'm really enjoying this. I really want to pick up more of T. Kingfisher's work. I haven't read any of their more cosy ones, so like you've got Think About a Gingerbread one, and they've also got some like fantasy romance stuff. Like I haven't leaned into that, but I really like their horror stuff. And um, so I think the other horror book on that I haven't read is the Twisted ones that I want to get. And there's also a continuation to What Moves the Dead, which would be a good one to read. Because as much as I didn't love What Moves the Dead, I still enjoy the characters and the writing and stuff enough that I would get it. So like Tegan Fisher is pretty much an auto by author when it comes to their horror stuff. It just, it just works. Like I really like them. So this is the, I think I already mentioned, the Discord book club pick. And Julie's already read this one. And they said, creepy, atmospheric, funny, and I agree, all those points are carried through in this book and yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Plan is, continue reading this over the next couple of days, potentially finish it. If I manage to finish it in time, I do have a book lined up that I would like to read. And that is A Shot in the Dark by Lynn Truss. This one is a cosy murder mystery. I'm hoping I end up really liking it. Cozy murder mysteries, the reason why I've chosen it for this week, this one's turning out to be a lot more readable than what I thought it was going to be and a lot quicker to read. And this one, because I'm going back to work and I'd only have the mornings to read, I also know would be a quicker book for me to pick up and get through. And it also it's on my TBR. And it's been sat on my TBR for ages, like a good couple years at this point. And I do really want to read it. Plus I have been in a nice cozy mystery read. So it's been nice to break it up with this book. It'd be really nice to go back to it and actually have a physical one that I can write in to try and solve. So yeah, I'm 
this is the plan we'll see whether it actually happens i might change my mind by the time it comes around to actually picking this one up and this one is not as comfy reading as this one because just the font style is a bit smaller i love this this is really good i'm really enjoying everything i've already said creepy funny it just works so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing what we get up to like i've left them in a place where something's happening and I'm like, this is getting creepy. And there is something about creepy houses that freak me out. And because technically this is as part of a house that's been turned into a museum, it creeps me out. I don't know why. Haunted, creepy houses creep me the fudge out of an evening. And that's probably because then when I'm in bed and everything's dark in the house, it just, it gets to me. It gets to me. So we're gonna read this one during the day today. Probably still before I go to bed as well, but you know. I'm now just rambling on. Like I say, I've got a few things to do. I might try and film that other video. Oh wait, wait, I can't stop yet. The shelves, I didn't talk about the shelves. So I did film me rearranging some shelves. We'll see how much of that footage I actually keep because I was in my pajamas and half asleep when I was doing it. But I'd been thinking about rearranging these shelves. So I'm really happy with these two shelves. So this one is like my favorite fantasy book. And this one is horror gothic leaning books mainly like gothic fantasy horror that sort of stuff that's on this shelf and then these two I've got these two here and then two up above which aren't in shot which were the rest of my fantasy books but they were a mess they were all over the place I had TBR books mixed in with all the other stuff and it meant that I was forgetting a lot of the books so had a brainwave and decided to put all of my TBR books on this shelf above me here there isn't as many as I thought there was going to be on there because I have more fantasy books that are on my TBR, except some of them are Branna Sanderson, who has this own shelf down here behind me. Some are over there because I've got these sprayed edges because they were from the Lotch Library book box subscription. So it's like, it's a bit all over the place, but the main ones are here. And then I've done A to Z on my fantasy books here on these three shelves. I haven't bothered separating young adult and adult fantasy. I don't really have enough young adult to warrant separating it. I've just done it from hardbacks, to my bigger paperbacks to then smaller paperbacks and done it in A to Z. I like it. I think it's gonna drive me insane when it comes to moving a book off my TBR shelf into this because it's all done alphabetically and I'm gonna have to move everything over by one. So we'll see how long it actually lasts. But you know what, it was, it's done. I was feeling the need to do it. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but every so often you just have an itch to rearrange your shelves. And that was me. Now that's done and I've explained that, now I'm going to get going and I'll catch up with you soon. be updating quite so soon but I had a really good reading session yesterday actually yesterday in general was a really productive day I got loads done that I wanted to get done so I was able to do some filming some editing and I read a massive chunk of the hollow places so I only have 50 pages left to go which is why I decided to update today I wasn't planning to I don't want to finish out the whole book without 
given you at least one more update. This is so readable, like I'll be honest, this is not going to stay with me, I don't think. The story itself is good, it's definitely not my favourite T. Kingfisher book, I think Nettle and Bone still is my top favourite. This will be the fourth one that I've read by them, so I would probably put this in like third place, which, you know what, is good, it's not necessarily my favourite, but it's still it's a good book. I like it. Clearly I'm enjoying it because it, I'm flying through it. It's so easy to read. The one thing that I will say is that I know how this is going to end. The reasoning, what's causing everything, I felt was kind of predictable, but that's fine. I don't mind that because it's still good. It's still interesting. I think the things that have been added to it is really, uh, it's really adding to that tension, the apprehension, and that's what I'm enjoying about this. It's the atmosphere for it. I like our characters. I like that, you know, we've got a main character that's in their thirties and another one that's in their forties and the humor that they have, it's hilarious. Like I really do enjoy that. And then, the tension and it's definitely more like you're not I mean you are seeing some horrific things but it doesn't feel too horrific it's definitely more in the unknown which is what I actually really like so this has the sort of horror elements that I really enjoy so I am liking it it's just one that I think isn't gonna stay just because I, don't, I can't quite put my finger on it like it's a good time it's fun it's got the right amount of tension to it it is a bit predictable but there's just something that doesn't push it to the top for me. But it's still fun, like it's still a really enjoyable read. Clearly I'm flying for it. So my plan is today to finish out this one and then I'm probably going to start the murder mystery. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get in today because I am going over to my partners. I was meant to be going for a blood test today but that has been put on the back burner because they haven't ordered it. By the time it's probably going to be done it's going to be later in the day and I hate sitting around there waiting to be seen. I like to be first person in and out so I'm going to do that before work in the next couple days but yeah. So it does leave my day free but I have quite a bit of editing to do so what I'd like to do is edit a full video which I think there's probably still going to be like two hours minimum on that. Um, finish this and then go from there, see what else we've got left to do. So this is a really quick update, but I just wanted to pop in and say the fact that I've almost finished this book. Unfortunately, well, it's not really unfortunately because I don't, I don't mind if a book is predictable if it's done well. And I think the way this was done is only because I was kind of expecting something like that, that I was able to pick up on it. Do I, do I feel like I want, I feel like I want something more from this. Which feels weird to say because I don't know exactly what I want from it, but I do want a bit more. Like, it's it's got the sinister creepy things, but that's probably just because I'm such a scaredy cat. As I said, I think somebody that reads a lot of horror probably won't find this that scary, to be honest. For me, it's got enough of the tension and stuff there, so I'm happy with that. I just can't quite put my finger on what I'm missing from this book, and I think mainly it's that feeling of dread that isn't being drawn out enough for me. And I think if it was, I would probably prefer it that much more. But also I couldn't tell you exactly how that would be achieved. I don't know what, what the missing ingredient is. But as I've been saying, it's still a really easy, readable book. It's got enough atmosphere that I'm happy with it. And I just, I love T. Kingfisher's sense of humour throughout their books. Like, like I said, every book, so the fourth book I picked up, all four of them have had that thread of humour with them and it just really works. Like there's something about that that I really appreciate and I also think it alleviates some of the horror elements to it because you have that thread of humour running through it. It would be interesting to see if they've done a book without any humour in and see if I still appreciate it and still like it or if I find it more scary as a result. That would be really interesting. That's enough. I've rambled about this, which was the point of this update, to be fair. But right, I've got things to get on with, got some editing to do, I also want to update another video, so I need to get on and do all of that. So I'll catch up with you in a couple days time.
morning. I am rather tired. We're awake, we're up, we're doing things. I don't want to be awake and up and doing things, but we needs, needs must. In really good positive news, I have book mail and books to talk about. So let's get on with this update because there's a lot of updates to go through. We have The Hollow Places. I finished this and you know what? As much as it was predictable and it was what I thought was going to happen, I still really enjoyed this. Like the last 50 pages were a lot of action. There was quite a few things going on and yes, it went in line with what I thought. There was a couple of things that I didn't expect that was just a lot of fun to read. So I had a really good time with this. I really enjoyed it. I liked our main character, Carrot. Her name's Carrot, but she's called Carrot. I thought that she was really fun to be around. You know, she's in her 30s. She's got no clue with what's going on with her life. She's got no direction. She's had to move back in with family members and stuff. And I'm like, girl, I can relate. So heavily relate to the character because I'm in my 30s. Well, I'm turning 31 in a few weeks time. I'm back home with my mum. I've been here for a few years now. I don't really know what I'm doing with my life. Like I'm in my 30s. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. And it was just really relatable. It was really funny. Some of it was really cheesy but it was a really fun time, but also really creepy. And I read the acknowledgement, so I don't read every acknowledgement of books that I've read, but I do like to read T. Kingfisher's because T. Kingfisher is always inspired by something. And this time they were inspired by a book called The Willows by Arg Agnon? Ag oh, hang on a minute. Let me get up the actual. Algernon Blackwood, H.P. Lovecraft, was quoted to say that it was one of the most terrifying stories ever written. So now I want to go out and find that book. And there are short story collections by the author that are available in a couple of different editions. So I'm planning to go book shopping at the end of the month. So I'm going to look for a copy of that book. One, because I actually really like that sort of horror. Like I like H.P. Lovecraft's work. I've been told by Eric it was, it's cosmic horror that I like, which I, I do enjoy. It was very good. I really enjoyed H.P. Lovecraft's work. And so I really enjoy reading the stories that have inspired authors like I love that and normally T Kingfisher is inspired by like a line from something or things like this in this case it was the creatures of the willows which is great because I, mean, I don't want to go into spoilers and stuff but willows play a big part in this book and I really enjoyed it like I enjoyed that horror aspect to it because this I was talking to my partner about it and I think I explained it well to him more than what I've been able to do on here so far this horror book it wasn't horrifying in the thing that it was it was horrifying in what it could be like it was your imagination that defined this thing and that's what I really like because honestly that is terrifying to me being told is a person things like that sure scary but it's something that you can be like oh but I can realize this like I can understand this whereas when you have something that is defined by your imagination it's so much more scary to me and I really like that and I think that's why I like like H.P. Lovecraft's work and that as well because it's just that eeriness something that you just can't explain and it just it works so I really liked that not everyone's gonna find it that scary I think if you read a lot of horror books it's probably really not going to be that scary but this is the sort of horror that I really like where it's something undefined and I I don't know I really liked that don't be wrong it's not it's not gonna be something that I'm like, oh, this is a new favorite book. Like I stick with what I said. It's not my favorite by them, but I really like this concept. And so that's why I'm really intrigued to read The Willows and see where the inspiration came from, because I think that is definitely going to be a classic horror that I can get on with. So yeah, I am I really am pleased with this. I had a really good time with it. That's great. And it's a book that's been sat on my TBR for a good couple of years now. So that that's really good. So that's that one. We'll move on to the next physical book we have a shot in the dark so this is actually so I've been saying for ages that this is like a third book in the series it's not it's the first book in a series um so where I was getting third from I don't know but this is the first book in the Constable Twitten mystery series and it's actually based on a series that Lynn Trust did on radio, BBC Radio 4 and she has now taken the characters and that that she did for that and expanded it into its own story so I'm up to 
chapter three. I, I didn't get far into it. I'm on page 55. I will say the chapters are pretty long. I mean, it's not too bad because there are like breaks in the chapter with these little styles, but they're long chapters. And um, I'm going to take this with me this morning because I've got to go get a blood test done. And I think by the time I get there, I'm probably going to be waiting for at least an hour, potentially longer. I like to get there for when they open, but after a late shift, that's not going to happen. This is okay. It's get, definitely got the humorous tone to it. For me, I'm not quite loving the humour because it's more humour laughing at the characters. So like the author is writing them in a way that is she's laughing at her own characters. And I I don't know if I'm quite gelling. Like it's not bad, but I don't think it's my favourite. But at the minute we have a few different characters. One is a critic that we know is going to die. We know that straight away. We get told that in the book. And that's another thing, the narrator is a bit omnipresent in the way that you will get told, oh, years from now, this person is going to be doing this. And oh, the critic wouldn't have done this if he had known it was his last meal. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Like, I don't mind. Again, I don't mind. It's just a different way of doing it. So the narrator is omnipresent, just watching what's going on. So yeah, so we have this critic who is going to be the person that dies. He's not very well liked. It's made comment on a lot about how much he smells. So yeah, and there's lots of people that don't like him. So we're already setting up for who it could potentially be because we've already got lots of people that are like, I would kill this person, including the inspector. Now we are told Inspector Steen, and it is pronounced Steen, is pretty much a bumbling idiot in this. Um, there was a massacre in Brighton where two rival gangs, shot each other to death like every single person which you know pretty improbable and we definitely think there was a third party involved but inspector steen is like no 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 that means all crime in brighton is gone and refuses to admit there's any crime in brighton uh, doesn't want to investigate anything doesn't want to do anything but has loads of accolades for what happened and there was like a movie made and everything about that to the point where Inspector Steen has watched the movie so many times he believes that that's what he actually did. So he's not the smartest tool in the shed and so he's a bit put out when we have Constable Twitten, fresh out of Hendon, who's coming in and is like, oh, but we have to investigate things. And he's like, uh-uh, that's, that's not what we do here. It's, it's a bit interesting. It's a short book. It's not actually as long as this because we have a first chapter for the second book. So actually in this, it's only 287 pages long. So I'm hoping I want to read a good 100 pages today. That is my plan. We'll see whether it happens because I've got no other plans. Because I'm having a blood test before work, I've got zero other plans today. Um, normally I'd edit before work, things like that. It's not going to happen today. I just want to get the blood test done. And then I'm going to reward myself for having a blood test done by not editing if I do have time to come back home, which I'm going to be coming back home anyway because I've got to get changed for work and stuff. But if I have longer at home, like if it doesn't take long at the hospital, then I'm, I'm just not planning on editing. So I would like to get a good chunk of this book read today. That is the plan. Then we have my ebook. So I have been reading Bookshops and Bone Dust on Libby. Honestly, I love this app. I can't believe I didn't realise that it was a worldwide thing rather than just US. I mean, I know it's definitely US and UK and I'm pretty sure it's a few other countries as well, but this is so blimmin' good. Okay, so I am up to... Oh, I stopped in the middle of a chapter. I'm up to, according to this, because it's phone pages and stuff, chapter 12, page 143. Now, I know the book's not that long. It's telling me I am, how many percentage of the way through this book am I at? 28% of the way through the book. And I am liking it. So this is a prequel to Legends and Lattes. And I was um and ahhing about whether I wanted to pick up Bookshops and Bone Dust because I love Legends and Lattes, but I also wasn't sure if it was just going to be basically the exact same thing as Legends and Lattes, but just with a younger Viv, who is our orc main character, with a bookshop rather than Viv trying to open up her own coffee shop. Legends and Lattes is a really cosy fantasy. It's not for everyone because not everyone gets on with the fact that nothing really happens. The plot line is we have an orc that's trying to open up a coffee shop in a place where no one's ever had coffee before. So trying to explain what coffee is and getting people to like it and stuff and there's like a found family going on is really nice and cute and cosy but there's like nothing else going on. Although my recommendation is 
don't read that book unless you've got a cup of tea and a pastry in hand or a coffee the vibes were good i i loved it i and that's the thing i did really like it like i have that on my shelves really like that book and so i just wasn't sure if i would also want this one and whether i would want to own a physical copy of this book because i'm like well i've already got that book which does the cozy fantasy vibes, which is not something I read very often. I'm much more likely to read a cozy murder mystery than a cozy fantasy, but I am liking it. Like it, I mean, it started off to me, I was really like, oh, I'm pleased that I didn't buy this book because it does feel very, very similar. Same thing opens up with a fight scene the exact same way it does in Legends and Lattes. And then Viv gets injured and she has to recover at this little seaside town and there she stumbles across a bookshop and she starts getting to know people and again it's got that found family vibe where they start and become friends and you know they're helping each other out and stuff we have a slight hint of something going on in the background to have a little bit of tension not much it is pretty much legends and lattes but with books but the thing is like i do like it it is really cute and so i'm like i'm tempted to get a copy it is just nice like i can't decide which one i prefer more so obviously once i finish the book i can decide whether i'm actually going to buy it or not but it is just a cute fun time and I'm really enjoying it and I like the different characters we've got elves we've got ratkins we've got goblins and gnomes and dwarves and stuff like we've got lots of stuff lots of characters in a cozy sleepy seaside town in a bookshop that is falling into disrepair that they're now working to try and fix up and it's just a cute time. So yeah, I'm liking it. I'm reading this one at work on my lunch breaks and it's a really easy read because it's like zero state. So it's definitely one you can just switch off to. Hence why I was able just to stop in the middle of a chapter because it's it really is that easy put down pick up sort of book and it's it's good it's chill so yeah lots and lots of reading updates i've been talking for ages already and we've still got two parcels to unbox so quick tea break and then we'll get to that oh that's a good tip. Do you ever sometimes you just make a hot drink and you go, oh, you did good. Yeah, that's me this morning. I'm like holding on to this for dear life. Oh, you can see my hand, oh, it's fine. We have two parcels. Both of these are pre-orders because as I said in last week's vlog, I've got better with my pre-orders this year. Okay, what one's this one? Ooh, okay. Oh, I'm kind of disappointed. There are editions with really nice edges. Did I not get the ones with really nice edges? Oh! <laughs> so basically I saw someone unboxing their pre-order of this and I was like, oh wow, that looks amazing. It's got really nice end papers and stuff. No, mine's just a normal copy. I think actually, no, that was right. When I went to pre-order this one, I think all the pre-orders for the special edition were out. Oh well, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't change the contents of the book. So yeah, this is Leah Bardugo, The Familiar. And you know what? Leah Bardugo to me is an author that, just throw the book around, kind of get on with kind of don't so i read the shadow and bone series it's their young adult series and i didn't like it to be fair i liked the first book the first book i liked and then i hated the love interest absolutely awful it should definitely have gone with the villain 100 percent. and i just hated all the choices that were made in the second and third book like i really didn't like the main love interest that ends up happening i just found him to be a whiny controlling emotionally manipulative person and i did not like him at all didn't get on with that as a result i haven't actually read six of crows loads of people say it's the best i haven't read it i might actually get it out from the library one day and do it that way because i just don't know if i'm going to get on with it then we have ninth house loved it loved that book the second one it was good but i preferred ninth house which was their adult fantasy series and now we have the familiar and this one does sound really intriguing i'm not gonna lie i got really excited at first because this just gives me vampire vibes which is not about vampires at all but i was really intrigued by it but this one is about luisa we're in madrid and she uses scraps of magic to get through her days of drudgery, basically. But the house that she's working for, the mistress, discovers that she has magic. They're like, right, okay, well, you're now going to use your magic to better our fortunes. But she gets involved in a lot of things. You've got Inquisition that are burning people for using magic. And you know, there's lots of different things going on. So I think this is going to be a really good book. Like, I do have high hopes for it so we'll see 
We'll see how we get on. I think this book is going to be the one that makes me decide whether I pre-order any more of her work. Like I say, is it on again, off again? I really was Armin and Arin over whether to pre-order this one. I'm not gonna lie, but I do really like the cover. Part of me thinks maybe I should have waited until it was out in paperback because I don't know when I'm gonna get round to this one. But at the same time, I do, I just have an inkling that I'm really gonna like this one and I do love the cover. So yeah, we're gonna give it a try. And I got this one during double points, so it kind of worked out for me. And we're just gonna see. I, I don't regret having this as a hardback. And if I like it, then it's great. I'm not sure, is this a standalone? Yeah, it is a standalone. So I, I actually don't mind having this in hardback as a standalone. I'm a bit more hesitant when it comes to series because hardbacks are expensive. And so I wanna make sure that the series I'm collecting in hardbacks are either absolutely stunning or ones that I absolutely adore and so I'm really pleased that this one's just a standalone and yeah I don't I think it's gonna be good but I am a bit disappointed I didn't get the sprayed edge edition I mean it doesn't matter but it was so pretty and this next one is one that I'm super hyped for I thought it would be bigger than this yeah this is way skinnier than I thought it was gonna be like super skinny this is the book that broke the world by Bar mark lawrence this is the second book in a series um i do have the gorgeous lock library edition for the first one and they were doing an edition for the second one but it was the exact same stenciled edges that they did for the first book which was just books which i'm like cool but i would want something different this one again i'm really excited I, I i can't believe how small this is let me get the other book to actually show you a comparison because i was not expecting the second book to be this small okay this is the first book this is the second book what happened it's so much smaller but yeah you see what i mean with the edges like they're gorgeous but they were literally just doing the exact same edges on here which i'm just like that's fine but you're not doing anything else. I mean, they did do end papers, but they did the exact same end papers and, you know, little thing, which is nice. But if I was going to pay that much more for the second book to also be done, I would want something slightly different about it, but they didn't. So I'm more than happy just to have this in hardback so it matches height-wise and not so worried about the edges. This is a book that I've been very excited for since I read the first one because I absolutely adored it. I just, yeah, I expected this book to be longer. So this one's 368 pages long yeah 566 so it's like 200 pages shorter but yeah i don't actually know how long this series is going to be i just know that i absolutely love it it's a series by mark lawrence that i'm adoring i've tried more of mark lawrence's books and one series i liked which was the red sister series that was a trilogy another series i tried which i really didn't like and gave up on the first book this is my favorite series by them i just love it and I'm really excited to continue on this. I'm actually going to be reading in May and I honestly thought it was a much bigger book. So I plan to give myself a full week to read this book, but it's so much shorter that I don't think I'm gonna need that long for this book. But I do love the covers. Like I love how these look. I love the fact that we have the library. I love the fact that in both of these we have the bird. So we have a little bird here and then it's bigger here. And I like that because, you know, if you've read the book, the bird is a thing. I, d I just love it. And I haven't really spoken about what this is. We're following two different characters. We've got Levara who lives out in the dust. Her family gets attacked by these beings. And so she has to go into this city where she discovers this library. We had then have the second character, which is Avara, who actually lives in a library and is trying to escape. Um, it's a really, really interesting world. Like I, I loved it. I loved everything about this book. I annotated it. I had an amazing, amazing time. So I really can't wait to continue on. I'm just, I'm just in shock. How am I in shock with both of these? One, because I was really hoping I'd get a gorgeous special edition of this one, which I should have remembered I didn't order that. And then the second one, like, ow, Diney, the second one is. I feel like I shouldn't be in this much shock, but I am. This is too much for a tired person to deal with today. But I'm very happy with both my pre-orders. I've now been chatting for over 20 minutes and it's going to be an absolute bugger to edit this longer clip. This is like a normal separate sunday video length clip and i've just done it as part of a weekly vlog so i guess we're having a long one this week but yeah i'm i'm so excited i'm actually really excited with both of these um i think they're both going to be really good like obviously i have higher hopes for the book that broke the world but i do think the familiar is going to be a really good book and i do like edge very nice okay right well i need to have breakfast drink a bucket load of water um and then get going for a 
blood test and we're going to be reading A Shot in the Dark, which is honestly a really easy book to read. Like there's nothing too much about it. Like it's easy. I can pick up, put it down. It's not taking too much concentration. It's not grabbing me yet, but it still has those cozy mystery vibes. So it's not bad. Anyway, I was going to start chatting about next week's plans because I'm really excited for next week's reading and stuff. But you know what? This clip is long enough. So we're just going to go and I'll catch up with you soon. Um, hopefully the next time I see you, will be wrapping up this vlog and I will have finished this, finished bone, Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is really good. Another solid reading week. I actually feel like quick tangent because I can't stop talking. <laughs> My reading this month has been superb. Like I have read so many things this month and technically we're only in the second week of March. By the time you're seeing this, it's the third week of March. But for me, it's only the second week of March right now and I have read so much. I'm so pleased. And the thing is, it's not like I'm trying to read loads. It's just I'm in a reading mood and I'm so excited with everything that I'm reading. Like it's great. Okay, right. Now I'm going to stop talking because I want to finish my tea before it actually goes cold, have some breakfast and get going. As I, as I said, because I have to tell you everything like several times over because I don't know how to stop talking. And you'd think I would know how I want to wrap up these little updates and stuff. I never know. It's why I end up rambling so much towards the end of these clips because I'm like, wait, how, how do I, how do I stop? How do I stop talking? How do I do this? And you know what? What we do is we just, we just stop recording. both the book and honestly pretty good pretty pretty pleased one of them was a lot better than the other so let's talk about a shot in the dark first because this one i don't think i'm going to continue on with this cozy murder mystery series it wasn't bad but i personally didn't like the writing style of this one so the mystery itself was really painfully obvious and i do believe it's meant to be that way because it's meant to be a kind of us mocking the investigators i didn't enjoy that like i didn't enjoy having a book that was basically just dedicated to laughing at how bad these investigators were and so as a reader you knew who was doing it like you knew what was going on i mean a couple things i was a bit like oh okay fair enough like a couple of links here and there but on the whole, I kind of guessed very early on what was going on. It's, it's one of those things where I don't mind getting it right. That's not what bothers me. I think it's just the way this was executed in the terms of laughing at the characters as they fumble their way through it, rather than actually being more of a let's investigate, let's try and solve this. And I mean, it has those cozy vibes because it is kind of ridiculous. Like it's not, yes, there's murder involved, but it just feels very silly, very low stakes. Like it's not, not got anything tension wise to it. It just feels very, very silly. So I can understand why some people would like this, but for me, it didn't quite land. So I'm not going to continue on with this series, but I would say, you know what, if you have an opportunity to give it a try, you've got it in like a library or something, then maybe give it a try because you might enjoy it. For me, it, it just didn't quite land. And, and like I say, it's more of that making fun of our investigators and being like, oh, well, we know who it is and you're all just making a complete hash of things. And, you know, I don't know if that was intentional or not, or not but the way it was done makes me feel like it was very intentional. And so as a result, I don't love that and I don't want to read more in that style and if it wasn't intentional and it was meant to be a surprise, then it wasn't very well done. So, yeah. But for me, this is going to be a mess. But you know what? It was an easy read. Didn't really have to focus on it too much. Like, it was fine. I would say out of all the books I've read this month, this is probably the least enjoyable. Yeah, I, I would say that. 
I, I don't think I'd ever reread this. Like, it's definitely one I think I'm just going to pass along. I'm still pleased to have read it. And, you know, like I say, I got this one for free. So I can't really complain about it. And then I did finish Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. And I did enjoy this one. I don't think I'm going to get a copy of this one because I do love Legends on Lattes. Like, I do prefer that one. However, I will say this one has a bit more of a plot line to it. There's a bit more action in this one as well, because we're following Viv when she is younger. So you see her at the start of her wanting to go around and be her, like, I don't even know what the job title is, but she just goes around and collects jobs, kill off these creatures, get the reward, you know, like, that's what she does. And so you're seeing her Obviously she's been injured, she's stuck in this town, and you see her realise there is more to life than just that, but she's also at that point where she doesn't want to settle down yet, she wants to go out and experience these things first. And you know, it was a good book, you've got a bit of a romance interest, you've got more of a plot line in terms of like there's a bit more of an action based plot line than there is in Legends and Lattes, so if that's what you were missing then you might want to give this one a try. Just for me, I think I'm going into this cosy fantasy wanting something that's really like laid back and not really focused on too much and I just think Legends and Lattes for me ticks the box. There are a few characters in Bookshops and Bonus which I really like. Um, I won't go into anything because don't want to give away spoilers and stuff but some of them I really enjoyed and I thought that was a really good addition. The way it ends in the epilogue I feel like it could be potential for another book but we'll see. I, I definitely give them a try but yeah I'm pleased I've got Legends and Lattes and I am pleased I read this one but I'm also really grateful to the Libby app that I was able to borrow it from the library without having to actually purchase this one because I think you know I wouldn't be bothered that I'd purchased it because I do like it but at the same time it would probably be one that in a few years time I would eventually unhaul but still keep Legends and Lattes so yeah, it, it was a good book. I would definitely say give it a read if you liked Legends and Lattes, but you wanted a little bit more oomph to it, like a bit more substance, a bit more like plots going on and stuff. And I did like the bookshop setting, I liked all of that, but I feel like the cosy elements were very similar to Legends and Lattes, like very similar things, but we just had the addition of this slightly more action plot line to it which wasn't a bad thing like it was good it was entertaining and like I say some of the characters that were in there great additions really enjoyed them but I just think out of the two Legends and Lattes is the one for me but that's it then for this week really I did also finish The Hollow Places as we know by T King Fisher and I did enjoy this one I think this was my favorite book of the week again not my favorite T King Fisher book but I really liked some of those more horror leaning elements and I'm really intrigued to see the classic book that inspired this um, so I definitely want to get my hands on that as I've already said because I just think those elements were really really good and I did like the main character in this one I thought she was very relatable I mean all the things I already said like I did find her relatable I did like the fact that she was an older main character which T Kingfish is pretty good for doing as well so I really like that I really enjoyed this so I'm, I'm pleased with it like I say best book of the week not my favorite T Kingfish book but I'm pleased I've read it and I would probably reread this at some point so I'm very pleased to have it and like I say I think the next Tekin Fisher book I get is going to be the twisted ones or maybe the new release like we'll, we'll see but yeah this was good it was a good time so that's everything for this weekly reading vlog I hope you've enjoyed it's been a bit of a mixed bag of reading this week we've had cozy fantasy cozy mystery and a horror book so all different this week but they've been good it's been fun easy entertaining reads this week which is exactly what I need although I'm very excited for next week's weekly reading vlog because that one's going to be focusing on some five star predictions as much as I don't rate books they're basically books that I think are going to be new favorites really excited to get started on that which I'm about to start after wrapping up this one it's been a good reading week which is great so like I say I'm really in that reading mood and I've really been feeling it this month and while none of the books so far have been like oh my god this is amazing this is a new favourite favourite it's still been a really good book like, I haven't had one where I've gone oh I don't want to read you I haven't enjoyed you like all of these have been books that I've been like yeah this was a good time anyway I'm nattering on Thank you so much for watching. I think if you made it this far, then leave a little skull emoji for the hollow places for this week. So if you've made it this far, you just don't know what you want to comment, you can leave that. Um, and let me know, have you read any of these? Do you want to read any of these? It'd be really interesting to see what your thoughts are on them. But other than that, I hope you've had a good week, whatever you've been up to. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. As always, I really truly appreciate each and every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos. It really means a lot to me. And if you have enjoyed it, maybe consider giving it that thumbs up, subscribing and commenting. It really helps this channel out. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below for you. And I will, of course, catch you in the very next video. Thank you.